Okay guys, welcome to uh, another fun video lecture here on uh, your phone, tablet, computer, wherever you're watching this, Schoology. Um, we are halfway through chapter four in section two. Today we're talking about chemical compounds, which I want to think about like cooking. So it's sort of like you're cooking with me uh, today. Not really though, because we're not going to be cooking any food or using fire or doing anything like that. But uh, I want to make an analogy that when you cook, you take um, ingredients which are very different, put them together, and you get something new. Okay, so uh, back uh, earlier, we learned about chemical changes. Well, this is where that idea comes back into play, is when you make a chemical change, you've got something new. Just like this cool little stir-fry thing we've got going on here. Um, this started out as potatoes, and started out as, I don't know, onions or whatever. Now added some energy, we cooked it up, now I've got something new. And that's kind of how compounds are formed. So let's start off by thinking about uh, a question uh, as we often do in class. So the word compound refers to something that consists of two or more parts. How might you make a compound using elements? What are some compounds that you know? So right now in your papers, take maybe two minutes and answer the question. Okay, no one's checking up on you. Hopefully you're writing right now. You're thinking about uh, what could be a, a compound, right? So um, a compound you might know about. Thinking about how you cook, right? Use it as a clue. So when you cook, you do something. When you make a compound using elements, maybe you do something similar. Okay, no more hints. Keep working. I'm going to fast forward a little bit and pretend like another minute has passed. If you'd like to pause it while you're writing, you can. That's a good idea, but I'm going to keep going. Okay, so our objectives today are to explain how elements make up compounds, describe the properties of the compounds, explain how a compound can be broken down into its elements, and give examples of some common compounds. All right, so... Um, I, I, I want to think about the word compound for a second. So um, this, hopefully you've never experienced this before in your young lives, but this is an example of a, um, a compound fracture. All right, and um, these are nasty. Okay, so this is when a bone breaks into two clear pieces and actually some of that bone actually sticks out of the skin. But the key thing to think about when you think about the word compound is that it breaks into two, right? So uh, a compound, as you'll find out, is made of two different elements, right? So um, when you think of compound, um, think of more than one ingredient, right? Or more than one thing. So I don't know why, but to me, compound fracture comes to mind. Also, compound interest um, is when a principal amount of money, right? An amount of money is compounded or increase over time uh, multiple times so again you've got um, more than one instance of um, adding up uh, a percentage of interest right so you can see it here here and here right so again the, the idea of compound come more of more than one comes up again so um, that's kind of how I want to frame the idea of um, what a compound is so compound is more than one, okay? Um, I, know, I bet you could probably think of other uh, uses of the word compound, right? Um, there's lots of lots of different ones, but um, I'll let you think of more. Let me make my O a little better. Nice. Um, the, our definition of a, pure, uh, of a compound is that it's two or more elements, okay? Um, a compound is a pure substance composed of two or more elements that are chemically combined. Okay, so um, these these com these they're chemically combined by bonds. Okay, add that to your notes. All right, so when you get to chemistry, we're gonna get into uh, you know in a, a year or two, you'll get into different types of bonds. There's some pretty fancy ones out there, but you just need to know that um, when two elements um, come together, they're held together by these things called bonds, and we're gonna do. 
uh, a little lab where you get to see kind of models of these uh, elements being bonded together. So um, a compound is different from a molecule. So let's talk about that now. So a particle of a compound is called a molecule. Uh, molecules of compounds are formed together when atoms of two or more elements join together. So uh, what a molecule really is, is um, a, uh, it's a, it's, it's, it can be a, um, it's almost like a, if you've made like a, a batch of cookie dough, right? And you take a glop of that cookie dough, well, you can say that's a molecule of cookie dough. So it's sort of like a, um, an amount of a compound. All right. So the tricky thing here is that, um, a molecule can also be a pure element as well. Like you can have a molecule of just pure O2, right? Or you can have, um, a molecule of H2O, which is not a pure substance, right? Because that's a compound because you can see it's got, um, two different elements in it. All right. So a molecule is a particle of a compound. So um, you would say a molecule of a compound exists when there's more than one um, kind of like clump of, of the compound. So let me let me explain that. So um, water is a compound, or you could have a molecule of water. Okay, so you could have your your uh, oxygen, right, and your your two hydrogen atoms, right. And that would be considered a molecule. Okay. Um, awesome. Compound, because, back to our definition. So some common compounds. Um, there is uh, a few here. All right. So some of them you've definitely heard of before. Uh, carbon dioxide obviously is breathe we breathe we exhale that right so that's it's a really common compound in our atmosphere um, and it's produced as waste right lots of times so um, it's a common waste product from cars and knees and uh, factories that are burning materials um, um, you could say, uh, obviously if you didn't remember from Miss Soprano's class last year you remember what glucose is what glucose is it's the sugar produced in photosynthesis. It's 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 in our bodies too. That's uh, a terrible way to write sugar. Ugh. Oh well. Um, so that's uh, an important one, right? So sugar is six carbon atoms, twelve hydrogen atoms, and um, six more oxygen atoms. Uh, hydrochloric acid, which we are going to kind of play around with uh, sometime soon, is uh, one hydrogen atom and one chlorine atom. Okay. Uh, we've already done some work with uh, sodium bicarbonate, right? And bi meaning two, right? So uh, we've got um, uh, this has sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So you're looking at four different elements right in baking soda. Salt, as you guys have heard already a few times, um, is NaCl. And sodium hydroxide, you get the picture here. We're looking at um, remember, more than one element in all of these cases, right? So these compounds have these elements bonded together here. So, um, you know, get familiar with them. Um, get, kind of get used to seeing these symbols, these sort of chemical equations, if you will. They're almost like the recipes, right? So when we talked about cooking, um, to create calcium carbonate, you got to have the right amounts of ingredients, right? So you got to have one calcium atom one carbon atom and three oxygen atoms to make it calcium carbonate. And um, just like when you're making chocolate chip cookies, if you leave out the chocolate chips, it's not chocolate chip cookies anymore. You just have something else, right? So if you left out, let's say the um, calcium and calcium carbonate, you got something else. You got CO3 and that's not calcium carbonate. So it's important to, to remember that their identities are really dependent on their chemical structures and chemical formulas. All right. Okay. So, um, talking about compounds again. So this is sort of just to my, to my last point. Um, they have a ratio based on their masses. So if you think back to that chart, we just looked at, there has to be a certain number of 
each uh, atom and each compound to make the chemical, sorry, to make the compound stable and make the compound really solvent or um, able to hold together. All right, so for example, we have down here, uh, water has a, mass, has a one to eight mass ratio of hydrogen to oxygen. So let's think about that. So you can see this in the chemical formula, right? H2O. So if you look back at your periodic table, I, can, I may have done this in class with some of you, um, you know that the mass of hydrogen is a little bit more than one, right? So if it's uh, one, we have two hydrogen atoms, we'll say the mass of hydrogen is two, okay? All right, so um, I'm just gonna erase that now. Oops. All right, so let me erase that now, cool. And um, so the oxygen, right? So we, we oxygen, look back at your periodic table, Okay, oxygen has um, an, an atomic mass of, if you look at it, it's somewhere around, I think, um, 16 or so, right? So um, you've got a ratio of 2 to 16. If you reduce that, lo and behold, you get 1 to 8, right? So um, the masses have to be about the same. It's almost like kind of like balancing out a scale, right? For it to be um, water... It has to be in that ratio, right? So two of these and one of these. Um, so the compounds all, also, just like elements, have physical properties and chemical properties, right? So, um, you know, water has a certain solubility. Um, we could say baking soda has a certain solubility, right? There's one of those physical properties. Um, you could say that the chemical properties like water is a certain level level has a certain level of reactive reactivity has a certain level of flammability um so it, it kind of goes by the, plays by the same rules that the elements do too um so a compound has properties that differ from those of the elements that form it so um our example here is water is not flammable right can anyone tell me that they've set water on fire before no right um, but hydrogen is. So if you take your H2O, you know, and you, you, you separate these two things, right? You separate them, you just got hydrogen, get rid of the oxygen. Hydrogen itself is highly flammable, right? I mean, um, it's partly what fuels rockets that fly uh, into outer space. So um, it's interesting, right? So that they, compounds have chemical properties, have physical properties, but they can often be different from the elements that make them up. Um, so how do we break that though, down those compounds? I kind of showed you a second ago. What if, what if we took hydrogen or uh, 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 water and split those two elements apart? Um, we can do that. Um, we can actually um, um, do that chemically. All right. So um, you can introduce another chemical, another element, which to sometimes split those apart. Um, you can also um, um, take another add another element and that has a certain number of electrons and as you guys might remember um, some ele elements really want to share their electrons right they want to get rid of these electrons here um, and give them up to other other elements if, if possible and some elements are seeking electrons right they're missing one they have a shell that's just missing the right number of, of electrons so um, some elements give them up some elements take them and because of that um, we get some really interesting chemical changes Okay, so um, here's down below, you can see um, just hydrogen, just regular hydrogen atom, just a regular oxygen atom. But when they start to share is when they bond, right? So you can see here, they're sharing an electron here and they're sharing an electron here. Well, that's just because, you know, thank God, right, that, that this all worked out. Hydrogen really wants uh, another, uh, is will, willing to share an electron in its outer shell. And oxygen's also willing to, to do that too. So because of that, it works together. And we have water, and we have life, and all that good stuff. Um, all right, so how do we break down compounds? You need energy, right? So um, similar to breaking anything apart, energy is required. Um, you need um, two, two ways to do that. You can use heat or an electric current. So down below, there's something called electrolysis. So take a look at electrolysis here. Um, with this, we've got our battery right here. So the battery is providing an electric current and you can follow the electric current, right? There's a positive charge, the negative charge is going up into just water with some salt mixed in. And um, the electric current is actually separating, all right? So it's producing oxygen bubbles here 
hydrogen bubbles here, right? So at the top of our beakers, we've got oxygen and hydrogen. So electrolysis is the process of using uh, electric current to do that. And this is cool because um, both of these substances, you know, can be used for other things, right? You can use hydrogen to um, power something by burning it, releasing energy. Oxygen itself is also flammable, pretty reactive gas. Um, and, you know, we can use them for different purposes. Okay, so what are some compounds that we kind of come in contact with? So um, some compounds in nature include proteins, right? So, you know, from life science last year that um, most living things are made up of, of proteins, right? So proteins are, are what um, most of our muscle tissue, our epithelial tissue, and most of our cells are, are made of. Um, carbon dioxide is another common compound. Um, without carbon dioxide, right, if you think about photosynthesis again, that doesn't happen, right? So it's a really important compound. Um, and carbohydrates, right, which we uh, consume for energy. Um, in the industry, right, so when we're talking about companies and um, businesses, um, we make compounds all the time. So um, lots of medicines, right, your, so your Tylenols, your, your stomach remedies, um, um, your that rash that just won't go away, you know, um, that that's most likely a form with a synthetic compound. All right, so um, synthetic meaning man-made. Made, okay. Um, so you know this this is this is great, right? We can make our own compounds, but you know, I, I was, obviously we've also kind of. Led that led, that's led to problems too. So some of these synthetic compounds can prove to be kind of harmful or or dangerous. I mean, and natural compounds can be too, but um, when we're making them, you know, it's kind of um, we're at we're on our own risk of creating something dangerous. Uh, but it's also led to some great things too. Um, some really great breakthroughs. Think about um, things like penicillin, which have saved millions of lives, and and um, think about just. Um, just the various ways we have preserved food, right? If you if you grab anything in your cupboard right now um, and read the label, like I'm gonna walk over here and grab something right here in my in my kitchen. Hold on. Okay, so I grabbed some cookies from Trader Joe's, and I'm looking at some of the ingredients here, and I can see mononitrate. Well, mononitrate um, is a compound, um, and it's I mean a synthetic compound, especially. Some other ones here, ammonium bicarbonate. So that doesn't exist naturally in um, in nature, right? So ammonium bicarbonate, I believe, is a preservative, right? It makes our food kind of stay fresh, not turn green, and just kind of be great. So good thing because I love me some Trader Joe's maple leaf cookies. Um, so just to look at the periodic table really quick to wrap things up. Um, these are all our elements, right? Love, love the periodic table. Just love gazing at it. Um, it um, it's full of these elements, right? So you have to remember that the elements combine make these compounds. So no one of these single um, things here on this table are are compounds. Combine, they can make some compounds, right? So we can think back to what we already learned today. So um, go ahead and look at what are the compounds that make up water. Well, let's look and find them. Got one hydrogen here, oxygen here. Think about baking soda. Remember that was sodium bicarbonate. So sodium is Na. So that's over there. And bicarbonate mean right? It would be two carbon atoms, right? So there's lots more. Go back to my Trader Joe's cookies. Um, ammonium bicarbonate. So there's actually a element um, for ammonium. I can find it. Maybe you can find it before I can. If you can, you get a cookie. A cookie from... Um, where is ammonium? I will find it. Uh, oh, I've just remembered, actually. there. I was thinking, I think of antimony. There is not an ammonium... 
uh, or ammonia element, obviously. So ammonia, is, uh, upon a little research, is derived from um, nitrogen. So um, we're talking now about a little nitrogen, um, a little hydrogen, and also, which is kind of crazy, it's using, uh, you got, you got nitrogen, hydrogen, and finally a little methane, which is interesting, right? So uh, ammonia's got some, some crazy stuff in it. So just that compound, it's a compound itself, right? It's a synthetic compound. It's actually um, created in a similar way that iron is created. It's an exothermic uh, process where you're kind of removing the heat from that from those elements um, to create ammonia. Anyway, um uh, ammonia, uh, after you've uh, combined those three things, um, along with the methane, which I'm searching for here. Methane, where are you, methane? Methane is a... Well, wherever methane is, I'll find it eventually, um, uh, is involved with uh, creating ammonia. All right, so hopefully this that was helpful for you to think about the periodic table as... Um, the ingredients, right, to create compounds. So um, this is here is your shopping list, right? To go back to the cooking analogy, um, these are the ingredients, right, you would use to combine with energy to create all kinds of compounds. And there's just so many to list. I couldn't get into it uh, all the way. Um, there's uh, more here. Um, ethanol is a, is a form of a fuel or kind of like a, a burnable fuel. You can put it in your gas tanks and burn it. Um, sodium hydroxide, uh, pyridine, potassium acetate, um, tons and tons and tons of th synthetic compounds on this list here. You can see these those long, crazy names in the ingredients lists are, are usually those synthetic compounds. Okay, so um, hopefully, hopefully your mind is now blown um, like this guy. Boom, as Stevie says. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a note on Schoology and um, feel free to repeat anything or clarify something. Talk to me in class. Uh, fill out the notes and be, be prepared for a quiz next class. Okay? Have a great weekend and uh, enjoy it. Take care.